Brachiopods are divided into two classes, inarticulata and articulata. Inarticulates lack teeth and sockets and defined adductor muscles. They instead hold their two valves together by adductor muscles. They are also lower in abundance and diversity than articulates. While they once had more families, the only two still in existence are lingualita and acroteria. On the other hand, articulates do have teeth and sockets and mineralized for supports. Most families are now extinct but Strophomenida, Rhinconolita, and Terbertulita still exist. These animals have two shells which are symmetrical about the midline and differ slightly. They also have a stalk on their bottom to attach to the seed floor. Brachiopods feed from a horseshoe or coil-shaped structure of ciliated tentacles called the local floor. They use this structure to filter feed on planktonic organisms. Their digestion takes place extracellularly, and the most common species of brachiopods have two digestive openings, one for intake and one for waste. Brachiopods are classified as both deuterosome as well as protosome, but are predicted to branch inside the proposed clade of protosome animals. Brachiopods are most commonly found in cold waters, and while they are found at all depths, they are generally situated along the continental shelf. While some species attach themselves to substrates such as rocky outcroppings using pedicles, others that live in more shallow waters burrow into the sediment. Different species of brachiopods reproduce in different ways. Some species broadcast their spawn and fertilization takes place externally, while in other species, females take the sperm into their mantle cavity. A few species of brachiopods are also hermaphroditic. Brachiopods have transient gonads that develop from the peritoneum of the medical, and gametes are released through the mystery. Brachiopods have a long history on Earth and first appeared as fossils in rocks. They can live from 3 to 30 years. Their shell is their only protection. Modern brachiopods occupy the different sea habitats ranging from the tropics to the Arctic. The brachiopods are relatively hard to find. Brachiopods are also sessile, and present-day brachiopods have been found infested with polychaetes. These parasites bore into the shell, but brachiopods also create calciferous blisters to prevent the parasites from occupying the space in between the valves. Brachiopods are mostly used for research and have no other positive effect on humans. Their two positive impacts include research and education. Although brachiopods have few positive impacts, they have no known negative impacts on humans. The data matrix tree was built using 13 total characteristics, some of which included body cavity, cephalization, circulatory system, nervous system, etc., and one of our own choosing, which was habitat. The 16S tree was built using genetic information of eight different species. In the case of both trees, the outgroup was Porifera, and the species that Brachiopoda was most closely related to was Mollusca and Amphipoda. The biggest difference between the two trees is that on the data matrix tree, you can see that Chordata and Echnodermata share a fairly recent common ancestor, while on the 16S tree, their most recent common ancestor appears earlier. It's hard to directly compare the trees we created to the published tree, because the published tree features different phyla than we used, with the exception of Brachiopoda, Mollusca, and Annelida. The differences between all three trees may have occurred due to some of the categories chosen for the data matrix, and even some of the species we chose. Take for example Brachiopoda and Mollusca. When we compared characteristics like cephalization and locomotion, the two were opposite, with Brachiopoda experiencing no cephalization and being sessile, and the squid experiencing both cephalization and motion. <laughs>